What's up, everybody? Let's make sure. What's up? How are we doing today? Give it a minute to actually go live. Guys, I have, I have such a gnarly cold today. Such a gnarly cold today, but I am looking forward to doing this. It's going to be a slightly shorter cooking section, but we'll get it done. We're going to make split pea and ham soup. I'm also going to break down two whole chickens and marinate them. I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. What's up, Oily Rain Crowd? Thank you for your subs, sir. Shadow Link, uh, Mariosis Reed, Snapshot, Acidic Snail, uh, Freyar, appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I do appreciate it. I have a, I have a pretty nasty cold today, so we're going to keep things uh, somewhat chill and short. But um, let's get started. We're going to do doing split pea and ham soup and uh, also going to fabricate two, two whole chickens. I'm gonna find out where my pot is. Not in here. Now we're cooking with mayonnaise. But I wanted to do this soup because it's a really simple soup to do. It takes little to no effort on your end, and it tastes absolutely delicious. I also had two um, ham hocks from Christmas Eve dinner left over, so it seemed like the right thing to do. Well, balls. All right, so we got these. We got these ham hocks. Get this readjusted. So the ham hocks just the inside of the ham. If you buy a a bone-in ham, you got these left over. These make amazing split pea and ham soup. Now that being said, you can still make split pea and ham soup with just lunch meat or uh, ham steaks or anything else. You don't have to um, you don't have to have ham hocks to make split pea and ham soup. It just makes a really nice one. Yes, I know, Mandy. It's it's, it's a silly cold, but whatever. We'll deal with it. Well, first thing we're gonna do is wash our hands. Okay, so for the base of the soup, we're going to start with um, onions and garlic and chicken stock and the ham hocks, and we're going to go from there. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is try to pull any meat I can off. We'll do this again afterwards, but I'm just going to try to get all the bits off that I can. Uh, when I clean my ham, like for Christmas dinner, I always try to leave a little bit of meat on the bone so I can do this later. And you're not going to get everything, but that's okay. The nice ham flavor is going to get imparted in anyways. But as I said, you can do this with a, uh, you know, even lunch meat, and it tastes pretty damn good, and it's really easy to make. All you have to do to cook split peas is put them in simmering water for 20 to 30 minutes, and you have split peas. Uh, as long as you get the ratio of water to peas right, you have split pea soup. Wow, that's cold. All right. So there won't be as much meat in the soup as there will be um, just ham flavor from the bone. All right. Well, I think that's gonna do it for now. I'll push this off to the side. But anytime you have a bone left over from something, even if it's like a roast or, um, I don't know, leg of lamb, really anything, you can save that bone and use it in some other application, putting a bone in your soup or uh, really any application where you simmer something is going to add a ton, ton, ton of flavor. Okay. 
with some really strong onion skin. Cheese and rice, man. There we go. So the onions are gonna get pretty mushy in the soup, and that's okay. We're putting it in there for flavor, so we don't have to worry about we don't have to worry about any crazy fine dices or anything. Just gonna go down a few times this way. Oops. Slippery today. I really need to get this thing sharpened. It's been too long. All right, we're actually gonna put all this together and chop it up. And garlic. Oh, okay, so for next week, I'm going to do a whole section on eggs, so I'll have that posted on this video when I post it, what you need to buy for next week. I'm going to do eggs, I'm also going to show how to do hollandaise sauce, which I know a lot of people have requested uh, via message. Hollandaise is absolutely terrible for you, but it's a, it's a good sauce to know how to make. Everybody wants to know how to make an eggs benedict, and uh, can definitely do that. So we'll do eggs pretty much every way I know how. We'll do... Uh, We'll do omelets, we'll do uh, scrambled eggs, poached eggs, um, over easy, over medium, over hard, fried, um, frijada. We'll do, we'll do all of those, all of those basic uh, breakfast preparations. And I'll also touch next week on how to saute in a pan and how to practice being able to do that. Because that's not a skill many people have and it's just, it's a pretty simple technique that you just have to practice a little bit. Sprouting garlic. And that is very, uh, very important for um, knowing how to do eggs is understanding how to flip it a pan. So we'll definitely touch on that next week. And then we'll figure out where to go from there. We are making a split pea and ham soup. And I'm also going to fabricate uh, two whole chickens to demonstrate how to break down a chicken. Because uh, knowing how to fabricate your own meat will really... Um, save you a lot of money over the course of uh, even a month or a year and save you several hundred dollars for uh, not very much of your time. It is very easy to break down a chicken. Um, it's just very intimidating if you don't know how to. I don't want any of that. Try to chop the cham ham up a little bit, get some smaller pieces in there. The bummer with the bone part is there's a lot of sinew and stuff in there too, which is fine for the soup, but uh, it's a bit hard to cut through. Oh my god, that's a strong onion. Very strong. So I want to make sure I get any pieces like like this out that are super, super tough. But that'll do. Also, if you're sick and cooking like I am right now, soup's a good way to go. Because uh, you're not going to contaminate anybody uh, making soup because it sits at such a high temperature for so long. Uh, you don't have to worry about germs too much like you would if I was making a fresh salad today with a cold. Uh, might be a bit more concerned. Okay. Now to 
dun dun. We're gonna use chicken stock here. You can use water as well, or vegetable broth, or really whatever you want for the liquid, as long as it's uh, water consistency. You're good. Okay. Uh, we use canola oil for this one, kind of a bland oil. Don't need very much oil at all. Like probably less than a tablespoon. I just want to make sure the onions, the onions start to sweat. So it's a really easy soup to make. All you're going to do is add your ingredients, add your stock, bring it to a simmer, and then add your split peas and um, let them cook. That's all you have to do. Yeah, we'll do hollandaise. Oh, sorry. I said we're here. We'll do hollandaise next week. Um, hollandaise is a very tricky sauce to make, but once you know how to do it, it's pretty easy. It's obviously not something you want to cook every day because uh, what hollandaise sauce is is egg yolks and butter and lots of butter so it's very bad for you um, quite delicious but once you know how to do that you can make a mean eggs benedict I also show how to do it by hand you can do it in a blender but um, doing it by hand helps with a lot of applications nice um, on logic I'm glad to hear that yeah hollandaise sauce is very rich it's very rich a uh, little bit goes a long way uh, I use global cooking knives ranger we're actually going to be getting a new stove top because this one, uh, this burner is dead. Uh, this the stove top's about 12 years old, so it's it's on its last leg. Okay, I'm going to take all this roughly chopped stuff. Uh, the pan's not quite hot enough, but that's okay. I'm not trying to get any. I'm not trying to get color on this. I'm just trying to get it to sweat down a little bit and then we'll add uh add our add our water and our ham hocks. Uh, as always if you have a suggestion for something you'd like to see or can be improved on the show, um just let me know and we'll I've gotten a lot of great feedback so far. Um I think the thing most people wanted to see was eggs, which is why we're doing it now. Um I like I like cooking eggs for myself in the morning a lot. Uh I went through a stint where I was a breakfast cook for about um 3 months or so. Uh I don't I'm not a morning person by any means. Um I knew how to cook eggs, but I definitely knew how to cook eggs after uh that little stint being a breakfast cook. The breakfast cook that was cooking blew out their ACL and had to have surgery. And of course, I got called in to fit, fill that job. But for the next, I don't know, probably month or two, I'm going to be focusing on pretty basic stuff that anybody can cook. I don't want to go super fancy uh, uh, French techniques on you guys. I want to go for food that anybody can cook because I think that is the greatest need of people right now is uh, people just don't want to or are scared to cook for themselves. I'm going to add a little bit of salt to get the moisture out of the onions. To be careful with the salt level when using ham hocks because ham is inherently salty. Yeah, so I'm just trying to do simple preparations that even if you're even if you're a terrible cook or you call yourself a terrible cook, you can pull off and have a pretty tasty meal. Yeah, many people are scared of cooking, but uh getting over that fear is a good thing cuz the worst that happens is you mess up the food and uh I think with most of the stuff I show, even if you messed it up, it would still be it would still be edible. So it's all good. So we got these nice big chunks of ham. I might have liked them a little bit smaller, but you know what? That's okay. This is going to be delicious. Okay, so when you say you want the onions to sweat, what does that mean? That means they're just barely starting to turn translucent on the edges. So they're just hot. Let me see if I can get this right over there. They're not actually translucent yet, but they're just starting to be, and that's what sweating an onion means. So my onions are sweated. We got the garlic and ham in there. I'm gonna take this lovely, lovely chicken stock. Uh, I thought about doing like a, a thing on stocks and sauces too, but 
honestly, to be realistic, making your own uh making your own stock at home is not is not easy. You can you can get get out now. There we go. Okay, so we got that going. So essentially, what we're gonna do is simmer the ham hocks for I don't know 20, 30 minutes. I might add the split peas in there as well, but I don't think so. Okay, so we got that going. Turn that way up. So that's just going to sit in there and simmer. Let's give our cutting board a quick clean. I did have some more stuff planned today, but honestly, I am so I have such a nasty cold. I'm just not up for it. I had a couple more things I wanted to do, but next week will be a big show. We'll go we'll go over breakfast uh next week. Okay. Once again, if you have something you want to see, um I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to focus on simple preparations. Feel free to message me here on Twitch TV. I'm pretty responsive about taking ideas and doing what I can. Obviously, I can't get to everything that's suggested, but we are cooking a um, split pea and ham soup. Uh, in this pot, we have onions, garlic, uh, two ham hocks, which you could replace with ham steaks or um, any type of ham, even lunch meat, um, and chicken stock and it's just heating up we're gonna get the uh, the ham hocks get the flavor out of them uh, I use two containers of stock honestly you can do half and half stock and water the chicken stock is not as important um, in the soup yes I'm a bit quiet I'm very sick right now I can't talk very loud I have a sore throat um I do find it to be kind of relaxing um, beekeepers so mr. wolf um, the other thing we have on the agenda is we're going to break down uh, two chickens. We're going to marinate those in something. I don't know what. So, grab my tools. Where did my, my zester go? No zester for me. Alright. You do normally use a chef knife for this, but it's one of the few applications where I get to use a cleaver. So, uh, we're going to use a cleaver. What's a zester? Let me find my zester so I can show you what a zester is. I hope I can find it. I should be able to. Where that? Where is it? It's just a little thing that has four four little holes on it, and then you just drag it across the fruit to remove the zest. Oh, it's probably misplaced though, and that's okay. Yes, I do know the five butter sauces. Um. I can do it with a peeler too, which I might ha might end up having to do. So I think I'll do that. Most people don't even have a <laughs> have a zester to begin with, so that'd probably be good. Okay. So we're gonna cut up the chicken and we're gonna marinate it today, and then that's what I'll be eating for the next couple days. So uh, zester is what you're supposed to use to zest fruit. Cause it's a specific tool for the job. I don't think most people own a zester. So we'll start here. Grab some lemons. And we'll use a peeler. Now, when you're zesting stuff, uh, the the thing that's great about the zester is the fruit has two levels. It has this nice uh, this nice yellow coating on the outside, and then it's got this white stuff on the bottom. It's called pith, and it's really, really bitter. So, that stuff is what you don't want. You don't want the white. So, you want to barely shave off the the edge of the lemon, so you have very little white. Because this smells and tastes delicious, whereas the white stuff is super bitter. Not as big of a deal with a marinade. But we're just going to peel off a little bit of the, the outside real gently. So if I had a zester, it would be 
much faster, probably more efficient, but that's okay. You work with what you got and not zester is not something a home cook usually owns. Peeler I think most people have though. If you don't have a peeler, you should have a peeler. I guess I can explain the technique here. How I peel things is I grip grip the grip it like this and make kind of a gun. And you put your thumb on the bottom of whatever you're gonna peel, and then you grip tight and you're only moving, you're like basically clamping your hand back and forth. You don't move the fruit, you don't move your thumb. You're just making a motion like this with your hand. Uh that gives you a lot of a lot of control over what you're doing. Um, if you need a little extra leverage, that's when you, you turn the you turn the fruit like this with this hand, but you never you never do anything but this on this one. Yes, finger guns, that's right. And this one has a much hardier skin than the other lemon. Much hardier, so it's harder to peel. Okay, I think that's gonna be enough lemon zest. I don't wanna go I don't wanna go overkill. And now, of course, these lemons are still perfectly fine to use. There's nothing wrong with them. Uh, the insides will still remain intact. They will go grow bacteria a little bit faster, but uh, well, the pH on lemons is insane. Okay, so that's that. Then we're going to do the same with a couple limes. It's going to be a pretty basic marinade. We're going to use uh, lemon zest, lime zest. Uh, actually, I'm going to use these lemons. <laughs> Screw that. Let's use them. Lemon, lemon zest, lime zest, olive oil, uh, probably some garlic. We'll keep it real simple. Also, I might even throw some dressing in there. If you're uh, <laughs> stuck on what to marinate with, you can always throw salad dressing uh, in your marinades. Uh, something a lot of home cooks home cooks do. It's definitely uh, definitely an easy way to get flavor. Get, get it vinaigrette style. I mean, obviously, you're not gonna you're not gonna marinate in buttermilk ranch, but you can do it with any vinaigrette style um, marinade. Now you can see on these little pieces of lime, I'm getting a little more white than I like, but um, that's not a big deal inside of inside of a marinade. It's just that you're still going to get that nice lime flavor out of it, uh, regardless. This is not the greatest looking lime either. That's cool. And if you do peel something like this, uh, you do want to put it in the fridge afterwards. You don't want to leave this sitting at room temperature because it will go bad pretty quick. Okay. Which way I go for a marinade? It's kind of the smaller, smaller the better. Man, my knife is needing a sharpening. I'm guessing my liquid is going to be simmering here pretty soon. It basically has zest from anything. It's very fragrant. Uh, it imparts a lot of flavor over time. Um, nice citrusy, citrusy feel on the tongue. Okay, so that's going to be good enough. I'm not going crazy today. Doing simple stuff. Okay, so that was a zest of two lemons and one lime. Going to use that for two whole chickens. All right. Let's see how our liquid's doing. Yup, it's about to simmer. A little swish. Uh, it smells nice. The little bit that I can smell. It smells good. If you have a cold and something smells good, you know it's probably going to taste good. Okay. Good enough. Let's
let's grab our split peas. I think we're going to need two bags. I think two bags is going to do us just about right. Now, split peas are really healthy. Um, and honestly, they're not. They're pretty bland by themselves. That's why you usually see split pea and ham soup. That's the most classic application of them. They're just, uh, they're just little split peas. Here comes the Kaliva. Well, thank you everybody for being here. I do appreciate it. Um, we're going to have a good time tonight. I'm going to have a nice chill cast uh, today. After this, I am I'm quite ill. I did get a lot of sleep last night, but I'm not um, not myself, so to speak. It's up on no minutes. I am happy to be here. I will say that. I'm very happy to be here. Okay, so as soon as this comes to a simmer... Um, I believe I'm just going to add my peas directly to this, uh, and we'll balance the water level in a bit if we need to. But I think that's going to have plenty of wholesome flavor as is with the two ham hocks in there. I don't think that's going to be a problem. You can always find more flavor by adding more ingredients. For example, if I didn't have ham hocks, uh, and I was using a ham steak, I probably would have added some more garlic and onion and made it a little more, uh, a little more chunky. So as with any beans, split peas, uh, anything you get from the ground, uh, you always want to put it and rinse it. If you don't rinse it, you're going to have a bad time. Maybe one's going to be enough, I don't know. Because if you don't look through it, you'll find stuff like, well, underdeveloped beans. Um, many times you'll find rocks. Uh, all sorts of stuff you don't want to eat, so you always want to at least sift through it for a second. Um, I'm not very good at judging on this one. Let's see. Okay, there we go. We got simmer, simmer action. So the ham hocks in there are kind of throwing me. Um, well, I can always add more water later, and it's still going to be delicious, so we'll do that. I would like a lot of soup because I like to eat soup when I'm sick. Especially split pea and ham soup always makes me feel really good. Well, that's a lot of split peas, but we're going to make it happen. Okay. So we're just going to look through one more time and then we're going to rinse it off. I uh, saw an underdeveloped one right there. You're just looking for difference in color. Um, you'll find all sorts of weird stuff in in beans. Uh, rocks are the most uh, the most common. Oh, yep, right there. Rock. And granted, if you cook a rock into your food, it's not the end of the world. Just uh, you just want to give it a quick look. Okay, that's good. And we're going to rinse it off. Uh, always rinse off your beans or rice or whatever it is. You don't know, really know where it came from. Okay. They will also sometimes dust the beans in preservatives, which I don't really like, so... Um, that's one another reason why I rinse it. You can see how... Oh, I hope you guys can see how light green they were because they had dust on them and now they're dark green. Okay, so we're just going to add these. Um, hold on. I think I might pull these out before I add, add it back in. Let's do that. That way it'll be nice and consistent. Okay. Oh, um, I need a plate. I can already smell, even though, even though I'm ridiculously sick, I can smell how much ham flavor is coming off that ham hock, or those ham hocks. So this will be, it's going to be really tasty. Whoa. Don't do me like that. Not very good tongs. There we go. Okay. 
now I can add my now I can add my split peas and have a better idea of what my water content needs to be, which I'm guessing it needs to be much higher. Oh yes. And now those are cold, so it's going to kill my my simmer. But we got we got all kinds of time. We got time for that. So you don't need you don't need exact measurements for this, but I can tell that I'm gonna want uh, a little bit more water. Uh, it's probably I'm trying to trying to look here. It, it's a uh, it's a little bit past the halfway point of the water, which is which is fine. But uh, I don't want a super chunky soup. And as beans break down, they make stuff thicker because they have the enzymes in them. So we're going to add a little more water. Also, some water is going to cook off. Um, as they as they cook down not there but here okay I'm just gonna have like two cups that should do it and if we have to add more water later it's not it's not a big deal it's not going to affect the flavor at all Get these back in there. Oh yeah. Turn it back up for a minute, and I want to make sure that we're we are stirring this. Uh, you can cook the beans to the bottom of the pot. Not going to be easy to do, but it can be done. So, um, as far as basics go, what would you guys like to see? Would you like to see like knife skill stuff, or um, like how to fabricate a specific thing, or what would you what would you guys like to see for the the basics of techniques? Yeah, y if you don't stir it at all, basically, um, it's gonna it's gonna cook on there. Chicken gizzards, nice. I'll have to get my knife sharpened before I do the knife skills, but uh, past that, I could definitely do a whole section on knife skills. I'd have to rework the cameras, too, because I'd need more than one camera on the cutting board, because just, that's just not enough to cut it. Okay. Sweet, delicious ham hocks. And I'm just going to pull some of this stuff off with the tong. It's a lot easier to get off when um, when it's cooked down, so... One of the occasions where you can play with your food. You can already see on this one, or I hope you can see, the all the meat's falling off the bone now. So all the stuff I couldn't get with my fingers is now coming off the bone. Which is good. Now there's a couple different variations of split pea and ham soup. You can make it super thick and goopy. That's not my favorite. Or a little more watery, that's what I like. Panhandling. I will I will go over sauteing um, in the next section. We're going to do eggs and uh, knowing how to saute is a very important part of cooking eggs. So I will go over that um, I will go over that uh, in the next section when we go over eggs. Okay, well, let's get started on the chicken. So we're going to break down two old chickens. Um, as I said before, uh, knowing how to fabricate your own um, your own proteins will save you a ton of money, uh, especially chicken. Buying a whole chicken is really, 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 really cheap. Okay, well... Although it is kind of gross, it does save you a lot of money. So we're gonna put the zest in there. I'm also gonna take. I'm gonna use one lemon. I'm just gonna slice the lemon. Doesn't have to be uh, precise or anything like that. We're just putting this in there for marinade. Oh, I might as well cut up. 
cut up a lime too. So we did use lime in there. It's gonna be a very citrusy vinaigrette marinade, but when you're using large chunks of chicken, like when you ate a chicken, you're better off over marinating. In fact, it's very hard to over marinate. So that's what our chicken's gonna go in, and then we'll stir it all up afterwards. Also, gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Not much, just enough to coat the chicken. Probably about a tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. That's for two whole chickens, so uh, not very much at all. And then I'm also gonna need a pan to put the excess chicken. Um, yeah, all the, the nasty bits. Okay. We'll fix our station completely, and then we will go, go, go. Uh, you can also use the extra parts of the chicken that you don't, um, that you cut up, like the spine and whatnot, uh, to add into soups and whatnot. They taste, they taste really good. Anytime you have the option to add, um, Anytime you have the option to add a bone to anything you're cooking, it's going to add a lot more flavor. Okay, now we're simmering. And man, that smells really good. Just gonna taste the broth real quick and see where we're at. Of course, my taste buds are off because I'm super sick, but so I got a pretty decent idea. Uh, when you work in kitchens, you don't really take sick days unless you're unless you're vomiting. Oh yeah, mm. that that is nice. That'll be some good sick food for me. Okay. One chicken. Oh look, I already had a pan in here. Well, let's use this pan then, so we don't dirty another one. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to make sure um, you guys can see this. In fact, I think I'll go. I think I'll go full screen on the cutting board one, so you guys can see that. Uh, that'll take me just a second. Second to set up, but we'll figure it out. All right, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go full screen on the cutting board, which I don't think I have set up. Uh, add camera. The second one. Hey, I got it right. Look at that. Okay. Make sure my angle is good here. Okay, good. Okay. Um, so chicken, it's nasty. It's gross. Everybody always gets afraid of sa salmonella. But the fact of the matter is that salmonella is the least of your concerns when you're cooking chicken. There is a little bug called Campylobacter which is the number one source of people getting sick from chicken. Of course, sanitary is sanitation is extremely important when you're uh, when you're working with chicken cuz it will make you sick. Okay. So junk in there. I wonder if these come with like giblets and stuff. I don't want those. Got nothing wrong with the offals, but uh, not so much in chicken. Oh, they sure as crap do. Okay. Got all the guts in here. The liver and heart and all that. Mmm. All that goodness. Yeah, okay. So, we got Mr. Chicken. Do a little dance. Okay, so to break down a chicken eight ways, you have the spine. You want to find where the spine is. This is where Mr. Chicken's head was. Well, this is his butt. But to get this into eight edible pieces, it's actually quite easy. What you do is you take 
The spine runs all the way down the back of the chicken. We're going to cut halfway, halfway down the spine. You can do this with a chef knife, boning knife, whatever you want. You don't cut all the way down. Now you cut all the way down on the other side. And then you remove the spine. The reason you only cut halfway down is if you do it, if you do the whole way, the chicken just kind of flops apart and it becomes very hard to cut. Don't do me like this. There we go. Okay, so we've removed the spine. Let's cut that out. Now we have two halves of chicken. Now there's a the breastbone is right inside here, which is right there. That's the breastbone. We give it one good hit. It breaks the chicken apart. Then you can slice it in half. Now you have two halves of chicken. It's looking my chicken, the whore. Uh, what I like to do next is take off the wings. That is your preference on what you do. Uh, every chicken has a joint, so you want to feel, take your thumb in there and feel where the joint is. You can feel exactly, exactly where it is. Then you make a little cut. Of course, I just butchered that. <laughs> hew, hew, hew. We'll throw the wing in there. Yeah, I'll, show you, I'll show you right here. If you, if you go in here, you can actually break it apart. You can actually feel where the, where the joint is. The little piece right there. So you want to go. You want to go in between the joints uh, rather than rather than on top of the bone. If you hit in between the joints, you will feel little to no resistance on um, going through. Whereas if you hit directly on uh, the bone, it's very hard to cut through. Okay, we're gonna take this little fat chunk off of there and off of here. Is everybody following me so far? You see, you see what happened. We took out the spine, split it in half, took off the wings. This is actually quite easy to do. It does take practice. I'm not the fastest in the world at this, and it's been it's been at least at least 2 years since I've done one of these, but okay, what we're left with is we have the breast, which is on this side, and the leg and thigh. Okay, so you pull up pull up the leg. You see there's a nice little fat chunk right there. I cut that cut that off. You can see in here it just kind of separates. So we're going to remove remove that on the separation of the muscle. And there you go. There's a cool little thing called the oyster of the chicken. If you butcher your chicken perfectly, it's a little thing called the oyster. It's this little chunk of meat right here. It's the most tender piece of chicken. Also very hard to do properly. Okay, so now this breast is giant in comparison to the rest of the chicken. So what I usually do is cut this in half. Now you reason with two more reasonable portions um, to cook on the barbecue or whatever. Okay, now leg and thigh. You got the thigh up here, the leg down here. This one is the one that you need to nail uh, perfectly. So cut in the little inside the little V. You look inside, and you can see, you can see where the joint is. If you do this right, there will be no resistance whatsoever when you cut through. So I didn't do that right. If you hit it right on the joint, there is no resistance whatsoever. So once again, we got our got the breast and the thigh and leg. We're gonna pull up the pull up the leg, cut right underneath it, and. Get it right where the muscle separates. Now obviously, if you're a home cook, you don't have to do this perfectly. Uh, if you slaughter it, it's not like it's not going to taste like chicken. It's still going to taste like chicken. It just won't look that pretty. And that's perfectly fine. Cut the breast in half. Uh, another thing you can do, you can also go like this to break the, break the joint. You can wiggle it around. And that makes it a lot easier to cut through. But uh, I'd recommend just practicing. Oh, that was perfect right there practicing how to get through the joint um, perfectly. Because if you can do that, it makes your life a heck of a lot easier. Okay, that's one down. We're going to wash our hands aggressively and then check our soup. And then we'll do another one. Uh, I'll explain all the steps again. But I hope you guys were able to follow that. When I do an actual knife skills um, video, I am going to have more than one camera set up on the cutting board so I can demonstrate everything the way I want to. Uh, 
Uh, yes, you can see your soup starting to turn a lot greener. Uh, there's a lot of fat on those ham hocks too. And that's okay. When I'm sick, I really like fatty food. Okay, we're gonna take these ham hocks out now. Um, not that I couldn't leave them in longer. Um, I think we got enough ham flavor. That's a, that's a lot of ham. I'm gonna put those on the side. Stir. Yep, nothing stuck to the bottom. We are good there. Turn up the heat a little bit. Just gonna wait to make sure this is actually at a good simmer before uh, before going back to the chicken, and then we will finish off our marinade and uh, be good. Mmm, God, that smells good. Oh, sorry, I wasn't on the right scene. That cleaver. I'll talk to you guys for a second. I was gonna. Whoa, wrong scene. Holy God. There we go. Okay, so you can see we got one chicken, one chicken eight ways. It's technically nine ways because we split the breast in half, but that's how you eight way a chicken, and then uh, we'll do the other one in a second. Lethal cleaver. No, she calls him Daniel Shadow Link. Okay, I can see, I can see that the split peas, this might be a bit much uh, peas for the liquid, but we can always add more in. I'm going to taste this one more time because I need to. I haven't eaten today. I'm very hungry. Well, the two chickens, I'm going to marinate, um, marinate for a day, day or so, and then uh, we'll have them for dinner probably tomorrow. Oh, yeah, that's some good, that's some good stuff. A <laughs> new sub icon, a cleaver. I think I like my sub icon right now. Uh, honestly, I don't. I don't want to be on Food Network. I'm just. I wanna. I wanna show people how to cook very basic, uh, easy food. I will do some fancy stuff too. Like next week, we're gonna do eggs, and I will show how to do hollandaise sauce. But um, I wanna focus on the basics. I think that's something that not enough um, cooking shows cover. Uh, it's very. It's very easy to show somebody or demonstrate how to make something super fancy. Pulling it off is a whole different story. So we're doing the basics uh, right now. I did have a bit more planned today, but I am quite ill, so I'm just not not quite up for it. Okay, so we got our second chicken. We're gonna demonstrate. We're gonna go through this one more time. Okay. Okay. So when you when you break open a bag of meat, this is actually pretty important stuff. Uh, cut a hole in the top and then take your knife and do this. The reason being there's always some pool of liquid in there so you wanna you still wanna leave it as like a cup otherwise you're gonna get juice everywhere which is never good. Especially if they don't have that little pad in there. But you can see there's a ton of chicken blood inside the bag which is not something you want flying all over your cutting board or kitchen. Alright, chicken number two. Let me go back to cutting board view in just a second, and then we will break this break this bad boy down. I gotta say, one of the most fun parts of working in kitchens is being able to play with your food. So we do little chicken dances and stuff like that. Um, obviously, when you're in a kitchen, there's not always time for that shit, but do what I can. Okay, my my soup is on a very very nice low simmer. That's exactly what I want. Nope, I have not emptied the second yet. Not yet. He is still full of the giblets. I'm just stir my soup real quick. I'll be right back to the cutting board. I just want to make sure this is going as intended. And it is. Okay, chicken number two. First things first. Get all the stuff out that we don't want. Uh, this is... What is that? Oh, it's the heart. Heart and... The liver and kidneys, all that, all that goodness. Uh, you can't do a lot of stuff with that. I'm not knocking the offals because they are very good. It's a huge chunk of fat. Let's just take that off now. Okay, so once again, we sit up the chicken. Have him take a little seat. You can make him do a little dance. Put your thumbs, put your thumbs on the side and feel, feel where the spine is. Feel where the spine is. And obviously, it starts here, but it widens out a little bit. 
So we know our spine is right about there. You cut halfway down one side of the spine. Okay, and then we cut all the way down on the other side. And then down. And we have removed the spine. Okay, so now we have spineless chicken. Has anybody ever watch uh, Cow and Chicken, the old show on Cartoon Network, and their cousin Boneless Chicken? I don't know why, but when I was a kid, I found that to be so funny. Okay, so then we have the breastbone, and you can see it's whiter. It's whiter up there. That's what you're shooting for. You're shooting for this when you hit your knife down. It just takes one little chop to break the breastbone, and then you can cut the chicken in half. Uh, well, I didn't do a very good job there, but that's okay. Um, so then we have two halves of chicken. Just like so. I'm going to remove the wings. You can find the you can find the joint of the wing right here with your thumb. Make a little cut. Make sure you're in the right place and then you don't have to do super hard chops with a cleaver or even a chef knife. I usually do I do this with a chef knife in a kitchen uh, instead of a cleaver. But uh, I have this nice cleaver so I try to use it. You can do you can do lots of little chops to get through or a couple really big ones. Trying not to blow your guys' eardrums. Apologize. Okay, so now we have our two halves of wingless chicken. To separate the breast from the leg and thigh, you can see there's a natural separation. We're going to cut right in that little groove, just a little cut. And then you can see on the inside where it naturally separates. The only thing we have to do is the only thing we actually have to cut is this little tiny bit right here. This just separated naturally, so we just go down down the line, take that out. Gonna do the same on the other side, find the little groove, make a little tiny cut, and then we can see it separate naturally. There we go. Uh, take our breasts and cut them in half. Because honestly, if you get a whole chicken, um, these are not prefabricated chicken breasts. You can see, let me just show here, where is, uh, oh, that's the breast too. Okay, if you're going to if you're gonna cook this, like in the oven, this is the thigh. Look how thick, look how thick the breast is compared to the thigh. So you have to cut it in half to make it smaller. Otherwise, you're going to have really dry uh parts of the chicken where your other pieces are fully cooked and nobody wants that. Okay. Okay, once again, for the breast and the thigh, it is just two pieces. There is a perfect joint in there which you can kind of feel on the top. If you go perfectly through the joint, um, there will be no resistance whatsoever. So that was perfect. See, I didn't have to chop or anything. This piece is very falls apart very easily. So that's just a practice thing that you can work on, but you don't have to sit there and hack at the the leg and the thigh to get it uh, to get it to come off. It's really um, if you hit it in the right place, it's very very fluid. There we go. Just like riding a bike. All right, so I'm gonna wash my hands, and then we'll go back to normal view, and then we'll uh, finish our soup, finish off the marinade, and then we'll get to some gaming content tonight. Starting to feel a little bit better, I guess. I'm still, I'm still really ill. I feel a lot worse than I did yesterday. But that being said, I feel like I have more energy than yesterday, um, because, well, I got a full night's sleep, which doesn't happen very often. Okay, hands are all washed up. Arise, chicken, arise. Okay, there we are. We are doing a split pea and ham soup, and then I just demonstrated how to break down a whole chicken. Okay, you can see here in the soup pot how much thicker it's gotten, which is good. Looks like we might have nailed the amount of water just about perfectly. Let's taste one of these peas. I'm so hungry right now. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Um, I have a piece of ham. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. I'm gonna throw this grossness away. Lose all the extra bits of the chicken. 
Also, um, if you do cut meat on your cutting board, at least rinse it off uh, when you're done. Never leave it sitting out uh, on the counter to be washed later. You want to at least get uh, the majority of the stuff off of it. Even just a little water rinse goes a long way. I'm actually going to wash this right now. Hey, sponge. Okay, we'll give that a second second wash later, but that'll be good good for now. Another great thing about putting um, a towel underneath your cutting board is it catches all the stuff that you you cut, so you can just fold it up. All the little scraps, and then you just do this in the trash can, and you're done cleaning up. Okay, we still got this bucket of chicken, which we need to make tasty. Or tasty for tomorrow. Okay, yep, split piece tubes definitely getting there. Almost. Uh, if you can see that in the camera, it is much thicker than water is now, or the stock that we cooked it in. So probably about another 10 minutes, so it's actually going to be really good soup consistency. Uh, this is when you actually want to stir the soup, because it just got thicker. So if it does get too dry, this is where it'll burn. That's going to be perfect, perfect sick food for me. We're eating chicken tonight. So did you guys did you guys understand the chicken breakdown? Did I do an okay job of that explaining how to do it? Um, I hope I hope that gives somebody the confidence to break down a chicken for themselves. You can do that with a chef knife, you can do it with a boning knife, you can do it with a cleaver if you want to. Um, okay, good, good. Uh, like I said, when I do more knife skill intensive stuff, like if I actually break down pieces of meat and stuff, I'm going to get different cameras set up different places so I can actually do a full demonstration. But chickens, it's pretty simple. You don't have to, you don't have to be a culinary genius to break down a chicken. Um. Okay, cool on Cryptio. Yeah, I didn't want to go into too much detail. It's really, I mean, if you hack it, if you hack it, it's still going to taste like chicken. It's not like you're going to ruin it if you don't get your cut perfect. If you have half a thigh and a leg, it's still going to taste like chicken. It's not, it's not going to kill you. Thank you, Pink Riots. It's been, uh, it's been quite, the, quite the ride. Nice to see you again. Dear God, fried killed chicken. Um, I'm going to wait for my soup to be close uh, before I finish this off. I, the last thing I want to do is have my hands covered in chicken juice and realize I need to stir my soup. That is the last thing I need right now. Oh man, that is so good. I'm completely stuffed up and I can still smell it and that's how I know it's going to be delicious. Okay, we got a little bit of olive oil on the bottom. Um, I'm going to put a little more olive oil in here right now. I'm going to keep this really simple. In fact, we're going to go light on this. Um, I'm just going to throw this out here. It's something I do every once in a while. I mean, yes, you can take all this time to make this fantastic marinade and stuff, but uh, honestly, you can use like vinaigrette salad dressing if you want to. you got to be careful on how much you use because... Um, uh, salad dressings have preservatives in them, which can taste kind of weird. But I'm just going to put this goddess dressing chicken because I'm lazy and I'm sick and I don't really have time to make a, a really really nice marinade so I'm just going to do that we're just going to coat it in there with our lemon zest olive oil um, lemon, zest and, lemon zest and olive oil concoction and then this is going to be a really simple easy marinade for chicken with our lemons and limes as well oh god don't go anywhere and then after this sits for about a day um, it's not like, e you can really use any dressing you want to, what you're really looking for is the acid content. So you can tell this is very high, high in acid, and we got lemons and limes in there, and vinaigrette dressing, and, and citrus. 
So after this sits for, I don't know, 24 hours or so, it's going to be very tasty. Um, at least the outside will. Okay. Of course, we will have to sanitize our counter before we do anything else. Okay, well, there is a... Uh, there is our chicken marinating. Nice, nice and simple. Some of the best marinades are really simple. Like one of my favorite uh, marinades for like flank steak is just olive oil, shallots, black pepper, um, a little bit of soy. That's really one of my um, my favorite marinades. You don't have to go super aggressive. You're just getting more flavor into the meat, which is a great thing. Okay. My hands are clean. But now we have to get the counter clean, because we got chicken juice on it. Especially it, since I have a kid, I'm a lot more... Um, <laughs> a lot more... aware of the germs. I mean, honestly, working in kitchens, I've seen somebody eat a piece of raw chicken in the kitchen on a, on a dare. I mean, really, most stuff won't get you sick, but if you have a compromised immune system, like the old or the young, uh, you have to be very careful with uh, how you go about things. Okay, we got this nice green color for our soup now. That's great. And that is a really good consistency, too. I'm very happy with that. Just have to taste it and make sure it is there. If the peas are there, we're done. Um, uh, Frey, I mean, uh, if you, sh if you steal your knives a lot, you shouldn't have to sharpen them very often. Of course, well, there's a lot of different factors like the quality of the steel and, uh, the blade and all that. But honestly, I think if you're, if you're just a home cook, you probably only need to sharpen your knives once every year or so. Not quite. They're still a little bit, um, firm. Okay, so that's our chicken. Just gonna wrap that up in some saran wrap and uh, call that good. Actually, this thing has a lid. No way. Actually, a lid for the Tupperware? Too strong. That would probably help if I put it on the right way. That's not the right way. Maybe this isn't even the right lid. I bet it's not. Nope, that's not even the right lid. Awesome. I got ahead of myself. Got excited because we actually had a lid for something. Yes, you can bake it in the oven, grill it, uh, do what you want. Get carried by lids. Oh, never mind. Okay. Just gonna try to make sure this is wrapped up nice and tight. You never know what's gonna happen in the fridge. Don't want anything falling into the falling into the chicken. So we'll do a cross hatch on that and that way I will be I will be sure that nothing is coming in or out. Master Cook. I can't put lid on bowl. Oh God! Note to self: Don't uh, don't eat undercooked split peas when you have a sore throat. Okay, I'll be alright. I need to blow my nose.
Alright, sorry for the delay there. That was pretty gnarly. What's up, Shadow Kid? Yes, I know. In fact, I need to wash my hands yet again. I mean, I'm really, when I was working in kitchens, if you have a cold or something, you're really conscious of you're really conscious of that you're cooking food for other people and you don't want to make them sick. I mean, I would wash my hands. If I was sick, I'd wash my hands like 40 times a day. You come home, your hands are just dry and cracked. Oh, that's life. Okay, we gotta, we gotta be almost there now. Oh yeah, that nice, that nice green, green color to it now. Just a couple more minutes, and we're gonna call that good. I want to make sure these, uh, these peas are nice and mushy because, um, but we just, I just saw what just happened when I ate an undercooked one. Uh, made me cough so hard I cried. Uh, might need a little more water for that. But you can see how much this is thickened up again. It's very, very viscous, uh, very hearty. Nice viscosity to it. Okay. I'm gonna add a little more water to that, just just for safety's sake. Not much, like a half cup. You can always cook more water off, and I know I know the flavor is there. I could probably dilute that by half, and it'd still be tasty. There we go. Okay. Almost done. Uh, we do sub only, only for the, huh, only, only, for the cooking section. I have no way of moderating my chat or really reading, uh, reading it properly during the cooking section. We'll be right back to um, non-sub mode at the end of the cooking section. Oh, you definitely wouldn't toss them away, Sizena. What you would do is put them in, if you're using a ham steak instead of a ham hock, uh, you would add it in with the onions and stuff and make sure it cooks all the way into the liquid. You'd want to get all the ham flavor in the liquid, so you'd basically dice them up and then um, just leave them in the soup. <laughs> Thank you, Yoinker's wife. The only reason you throw away the ham hock is because it's a giant bone. I mean, all that meat on there, I could have gone a lot more aggressive. I could have gone a lot more aggressive on pulling off the meat off of those. The only reason it gets thrown away is because the, the one part's inedible. Uh, pretty much as far as soup, you want to add add your meats in and make sure all the flavor gets into into the liquid as much as possible. Oh man, that is looking good. I'm going to have a nice bowl of this, and then that will probably make me feel a little bit better about casting tonight. It's been a long, it's been a long four days. And thank you everybody for joining me today. It's been, uh, it's been a crazy, a crazy, crazy start to this year. Uh, I'm very happy to be past the year mark. Um, really enjoying this cooking section. Uh, once again, next week we'll be doing eggs and hollandaise sauce. I mean, slippy and ham soup is basic, but it is it is damn good. There's a reason. There's a reason it's been around for so long. It's because it is damn delicious. And I'm gonna put this chicken in the fridge. Don't need any bacteria problems. So we'll have that for dinner um, probably tomorrow. With a red flannel shirt and an axe. Well, thank you, Spoot. Thank you, uh, Blunt Cash. Do appreciate it. Uh, once again, this happens every Saturday at 10 p.m. Pacific, and then I will um, upload it to YouTube afterwards. Um, Oily Rain Cloud, you have a couple options. I just use soapy water here. I mean, really, that's what most people at home use. I mean, you can, you can buy a sanitizer, or you can use a bleach, or whatever else. Uh... I mean, if I was gonna, if I was doing like a whole thing on butchering and I just covered the entire counter in blood, I would definitely grab some bleach and uh, use that to uh, to clean up. But if you work in a kitchen, you always have a sanitizer bucket next to you. Okay. But 
I'm confident that's clean enough. Okay, this soup's gotta be it's gotta be there. It's gotta be there. We want to get there, right? Come on, split pea and ham. I'm hungry. But I really appreciate the crowd for this. I honestly, I never would have thought that cooking would do so well on a gaming channel. So thank you all for um, enjoying the cast and being here and helping me. Uh, I really helping me spread my joy of cooking. Cause I really. Uh, uh, most people hate training people in kitchens. I was I was that guy that liked to teach other people. That was my favorite part of the job was training, training people to do stuff and sharing sharing my knowledge. Oh my god, that was good. That was like the first thing I've been able to taste in two days. Mmm. Very salty, but that's okay. Alright, we got about two or three more minutes on this, and I'm going to turn it off and call it good. It's no longer crunchy, which is exactly what I need. Well, that's a nice, uh, nice viscosity. You can tell when you drag your spoon through something. I hope you guys can see that. If it leaves a wake, uh, it's much, it's definitely nice and thick. Everybody likes their soup a little bit different, uh, as far as thickness goes, but... Playing with it with a spoon and dragging it through definitely gives you a good idea of where you're at. Of course, everything gets thicker when it uh, cools down, so uh, I might actually add a little more water here because I know, at the very end, because I know it's going to be much thicker when it cools down, and I won't be eating it when it's this hot. There's no way. Burn off my tongue. Tongue. What'd you miss? We made a split pea and ham soup. We also fabricated two whole chickens and marinated them. Um, that's a... Uh, Try to keep it nice and simple for this one because I'm sick. I don't want to do any major food prep. But uh, next week will be eggs and hollandaise sauce. Uh, we'll go over how to cook pretty much every kind of eggs I know how to. Will you fill the camel pack with soup or just water? I really need to get hydrated today. I feel kind of dehydrated and I am. Um, yeah, if somebody permit Koenig, that'd be great. Yeah, I like thick, thicker soups too, especially when I'm ill. I don't want I don't want a watery mess. That's just me, though. I want something that's going to stick to my ribs. Okay. This is the key point to be stirring it, because what's happening right now is all the liquid's rising to the top, and all the peas are going to the bottom. So if you don't stir it, you're going to get two things. You're going to get uneven cooking, and you can also get it to stick to the bottom of the pan, which is the last thing you want. Okay. All right, we'll give it one more taste. I think we're there, though. I, think we, I definitely think we're there. Ha, it still needs another second, but damn, it's close. I'm going to add my water now, and then we'll simmer it for two more minutes, and that'll be, that'll be it. And then what I'm going to do is what I usually do is uh, I'm going to go load up the stream downstairs and then uh, I'll take a few minutes to eat and uh, we'll, get, we'll get right back to our normal normal gaming schedule. Um, Alright, yeah, that that's good. That's real good. Alright, about three more minutes on that and we're going to call it good. Hey, thanks a lot, CJ Bluto. I appreciate that. Yes, everybody loves food. Uh, being able to cook for yourself is such an asset, um, not only financially, but uh, it really, I don't know, I believe it improves the quality of your life. You feel really good when you cook and eat for yourself. Um, I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm a, a wonder and I never, I never eat crappy or never eat a fast food or anything like that, but being able to prepare simple meals for yourself really um, improves the quality of your life. I'd be amazed how you feel when you uh, learn how to cook for yourself. Like for example, I don't eat very much. I don't eat very much protein. Oh, that's right, I I need to set my towel right on the edge. I don't eat very much protein. I don't eat very much meat. But um, 
my body will tell me when I want meat. It'll say, well, and then I, I'll go get off the cast. I'm like, man, I really want eggs. And I don't eat eggs very often. So um, uh, the more you cook for yourself, the more you eat, the more in tune you get with what your what your body wants. Whereas if you're eating uh, pizza or fast food all the time, uh, your body really has no idea what, what it wants as far as nutrition or um, to give you energy. Yeah, I can crack an egg one-handed. My dad can crack four eggs at one time. It's pretty crazy shit. Well, that's okay, Frey. That's why I'm showing easy stuff. Yes, I could show off and say, oh, look at me. I'm a classically trained sh cook, and I know how to do all this stuff. But really, uh, the basics are where it's at. You don't, have, you don't have to be a great cook to cook well. Uh, you do have to be a great cook to do some very precise things that you would do in a, a restaurant. But stuff like making soup and breaking down a chicken and stuff, you don't need you don't need a lot of culinary knowledge to do that. Um, you just need just need to practice a little bit. I'm a, I'm a big fan of soups for that reason. You don't need to be a culinary genius to make a really good soup. You just have to just have to know the basics. Well, the basics are, uh, um, no, not really, uh, Frey. I've never been in a kitchen where over-tasting was a bad thing. The, the only time you run into trouble is if you taste something over and over and over and over again. You kind of lose, uh, lose scope on what it's supposed to taste like or what you were going for. That's usually when you pull on somebody else and have them taste it, but, uh, it's usually not a problem. Okay, come on, soup. You can do this. I'm really hungry. Not really knows. Let's do it. Yeah, that's perfect, perfect viscosity for me. That's exactly, exactly how I imagined it. Rubbish bin staring into your soul, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have a habit of leaving drawers open. So out of one chicken, how much do you say? Well, it depends on how much chicken costs, but every time you have a butcher cut something for you, like uh, pre-packaged chicken breasts and stuff like that, uh, it all costs money. Uh, buying a whole chicken is extremely cheap in comparison to buying all the parts because there's somebody else doing that labor, and they're getting paid to do so. So um, you're cutting out the middleman, especially especially with steaks. Uh, when we come up to a closer up to a barbecuing holiday, I'll spend some money on some steaks and stock my freezer and show you guys how to break that down. Steaks are the number one way, if you eat a lot of meat, that you can save money uh, for yourself. Like if you know how to break down your own New York strip, you're saving, <laughs> you're saving a lot of money in comparison to having somebody do that for you. It's not a simple application, and it's not that difficult either. Okay. We're so close. I just want, I just want to know. Just give me just another second. You can do this. Yeah, cutting steak yourself is amazing. Not to mention you get this really fresh, awesome product at the end. No, not really, friend. I mean, a trash can fills up pretty fast here, so I'm gonna take it out tonight or tomorrow. Oh God. <coughs> I'm sorry. Oh man, not good. I drink tap water. I don't really care. It tastes fine to me. I don't filter my tap water. Okay. We have split pea and ham soup. Done. Grab a ladle, which I hope we still have. We should have a ladle. <sighs> ladle, 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 ladle. Uh, nope, too low. Hey, look.
look, it's a ladle. Show this. This will be good. Well, this will probably be what I'm eating for the next two days because I can't taste anything else. So that's what we're gonna go with. We got nice big chunks of ham in there. Not the most appetizing color in the world, but I know it's going to be tasty. So there's my dinner. Alright guys, thank you everybody. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, kill the cast. I'm going to load up within about a minute. I already have it set up downstairs. Um, we're going to go live downstairs. I'm going to take about a 10 minute break and uh, get some food for myself. And then we will uh, go up. I'm going to be playing some FTL tonight. I was going to complete my 100% of Super Meat Boy. I'm just not uh, just not up for the challenge right now. So if you guys will excuse me, I'm just going to load up my stream downstairs. And, um, and I'm going to come up and eat and put away the soup. And we'll get started on uh, some gaming. Now once again, I'll post this to YouTube. Um, I'll post this to YouTube probably tonight or tomorrow. And then um, I'll post the recipe and what we're gonna do next week on that on that information. So I'll be right back live in about a minute and a half, two minutes, if that. Yes, release the kraken. <laughs> 